Hey friends what if Naruto was got massive harem miltia, Melanie movie. But before we start, if you want more amazing stuff like this, then be sure to subscribe to our channel and like this video. Also if possible share this video with your friends. Now without wasting any more time. Let's begin the story. Where am I? A blonde boy asks while staring strange huge gates, they were even bigger than the gates back in Konoha. On top of being incredibly big they also have weird carvings engraved on them, one side of the gates has carvings of winged people with halos above their heads, while the other side has carvings of people who look more demonic having long, curved nails, big bat wings behind their backs and very long horns on top of their heads. Ah, welcome, startled by the voice. The blonde quickly turns behind himself to see another, older male who was dressed in some sort of black tux, standing in front of him. Whoa, whoa, who are you? The blonde asks as the other male takes out pencil and paper with some sort of list on it. The blonde boy jumps back a bit as the two items start floating in the air and begin writing all by themselves. Before I answer any of your questions, first I would like you to answer some of mine and no, you can't leave until you answer all of them. Now first question, do you remember who you are? I, the blonde boy paused for a bit as he tried to remember anything about himself, and then like lightning it suddenly hit him, Naruto, I am Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze. The older male stops writing as he smiles, ah, a heroic death. I see, interesting, what's the last thing you remember? I, was laying on the ground next to my best friend, Sasuke Uchiha, and we were both dying, but that's it. The blonde tells him as other memories were assaulting his mind but he was having a hard time deciphering. Alright, that will be all, the man says as the floating pencil and paper vanish. Well, Mr. Uzumaki, please listen to me very carefully while I try to explain everything as easily as possible for you. The man says while looking directly into Naruto's eyes. Causing the blonde to gulp nervously, you passed away. When you and the Uchiha fought almost to the death. You blew each other's arms off, at the end of the battle. Sasuke and you managed to reconcile the friendship you once shared, but it was a little too late as both of you were close to bleeding out fast and suffering fatal chakra exhaustion, what little chakra you had left, you transferred it to Sasuke so he would stay alive long enough for medics to arrive and heal him, which was a success by the way as a few moments later the medics did arrive and saved him, but you were already dead by then, thus here we are. Naruto nods slowly as the last memory played out in his head and knew what the older male said was true, so if I am dead where am I? The gate of second chance, the man says while smiling gently, you see I am what you call a grim reaper or angel of death, well, technically that's my boss title but let's just say I am here for cutting down time, alright? The angel said as Naruto nods in understanding, right, so, some people like you were treated badly in the beginning of your lives like Ichigo or Hiseo, wait you don't know them air scratch that part, alright since you had a very, very, bad childhood, my bosses wanted me to tell you that we're taking responsibility like we did for some others and are prepared to compensate for this endeavor. You mean a second chance at life? Naruto said with wide eyes, the man nods in confirmation, but then gains a sheepish look. Well, yes, and no at the same time, people's souls are tricky things you see, they can only live in particular bodies, aka your original bodies, meaning we can't give you a new body nor just shove your soul down into someone else's body, in order to give you a new life, we need to send you to another world, which more or less is similar to your original one, are you following on what I have been saying so far? The blonde hero nods, what you're saying is that I can't go back to my home and can only be given chance at another life in some alternate reality, am I right? You are correct, however, the decision to do so is yours and yours alone to make, meaning I can't force or influence you in either getting a new life or ascending to heaven. The Reaper explains as Naruto sits down and begins to focus. He was a shinobi, a ninja, who gave his life to end the fourth shinobi war, and now he's in some odd limbo with a kind grim reaper, thanks, who can hear his inner thoughts apparently, who is offering him a second chance at life, mind if I ask a question? Sure, said the man who quirks an eyebrow in curiosity. If I died in the next world, would I still be able to meet my friends in the same heaven? Naruto asked this question with a slightly pleading look, this is really important. Yes, I am not really supposed to say this but heaven is actually a one giant place that all worlds are connected to, trust me. I hang out with Arizato Minato and Ryugi Shiki on a daily basis, so, I am guessing that knowing this you will take a shot at the second chance? 
The Reaper asked to clarify the situation. Yes, Naruto nods slightly with a relieved smile on his face. So, when will you send me to this, new home? Will I just pop out of thin air or something? The Reaper shook his head. Boss wouldn't like me telling you how this works, Boot, since you've been such a good sport so far, he'll tell you. We're sending your spirit to an empty vessel, which is extremely similar to your original one. This body is a moment away from death and nothing can be done to save it as the owner's soul has given up on life. Your soul will take over that body and well use some of our power to heal the more fatal wounds and the rest you would be able to heal yourself with the help of a medic. So, are you ready? I guess, Naruto says as he turns around to face the huge gates. The angel of death snaps his fingers and the gates open. The blonde boy covers his face with both arms as his eyes are suddenly assaulted by bright light. Just walk through the gates and everything will be done instantaneously. You might feel a bit lightheaded and a bit confused at first, but it will pass over quickly. Good luck, my boy, and I hope we will meet some day again. The Reaper yells before vanishing from existence. Naruto smiles as he uncovers his face and takes the first new step. XXXXXXXXXXX unknown location XXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXX
but I don't seem to remember anything besides that, Naruto truthfully says while the older male nods in acceptance and walks over to side of the room where a desk was located, he opened one of the drawers and took out some sort of book. The man opened the book and gave it to Naruto, the blonde looked down at the pages that were showing a global map was amazed by it, unlike elemental nations where there was a single massive landmass surrounded by smaller islands, this new world he was in had three big landmasses and a single huge one, he studies it more deeply, trying to find something that will make him remember anything, but he already knew it was a pointless action, sorry, but I don't know what or where I am. That's very bad, are you sure you don't the mon's eyes widen slightly when he notices Naruto's tattoos and gave him a look of curiosity, what are those? I dunno, I think they're birthmarks or something, Naruto says, though doubtful himself on what they were, after finishing eating the soup he prepares to stand up, but the suited man presses him down and puts the bed sheets over him, the blonde looked with concern at him, please, I don't want to cause any more trouble. It's no trouble at all, you still need a lot of rest before you can move freely about, just stay here for now while I retrieve someone, the older male says as he also hands over white robes to the boy, these are your clothes, they were torn and bloody at first but we managed to fix them. Naruto nods in gratitude as that he starts to unravel his clothes, and was pleasantly surprised at how awesome they looked, wow, this version of me was cool, or at least these swanky robes are. The robe's color is the purest of white, a red wine sash showing the same symbol that is on Naruto's arms also covers the whole body, on his left shoulder there was a leather spalder, which under it had a cape dangling smoothly under his arm, the one thing odd about the whole outfit was the hood. This hood was a bit larger than normal, Naruto puts on his cloak hood to notice that it was a perfect fit but when he looks at the mirror to see his reflection, he notices that his face was almost completely hidden by the shadow of the hood, only his mouth is visible. Slam! Naruto turns to see the man who gave him back his clothes walk into the room again. And behind him walks in another older man, he had dark spiky hair and donned a cloak. With predominantly dark clothing, he has graying black, spiky hair, with a red, tattered cloak, wears a grey dress shirt with a long tail, black dress pants, and black dress shoes, he also wears a ring on his right index finger, two other rings on his fourth finger and a necklace with a crooked cross-shaped pendant, he took out a flask and drank its contents, causing Naruto's nose cringe from the smell of alcohol. Dude, mind drinking that swell outside? The boy asks, although, he also wondered what the heck is wrong with his vocabulary, he never said dude before, must been the old Naruto's style of speaking. The man gave an almost innocent but guilty look, like a young a child being caught sticking his hand in the cookie jar, while still drinking the flask, he sighs putting away the flask, they taught you how hidden your five senses in the order. Excuse me? Naruto asks in confusion as the man pulls out a different flask, this one had the same symbol that was on Naruto body and robes. Here, it's something for your soreness, the graying old man says as Naruto took a long swig of the contents before turning slightly green from the disgusting taste. All right, tell me all that you know about the order. Huh? I don't know anyone or anything called that. What is this? This? Dude, did you roofie me? Naruto accuses the man after suddenly feeling incredibly lightheaded and dizzy. The man nods in confirmation. Well, thanks for the honesty. But why the hell did you do that? Well, let's just say that Ozzy here, the man points at the suited man, is bleeding heart kind of man, and let's leave it that. Next question Do you truly don't remember who you are? No, I just remember my name, and that's all. Damn. This is disappointing. I guess that rumor about the order returning was just bogus. Sorry kid, we thought you were in a, sort of urban legend, a violent one at that, maybe you wore that robe to look intimidating to your foes, well, it doesn't matter whatever you did, Ozzy will protect ya from now on, the man lazily says as he walks towards the door, but just as he was about to exit he sharply turns to face the man named Ozpin, he'll continue looking for answers, something just feels off about this whole thing. He then exists the room and closes the door behind him. Sue, who was that? Naruto asks before picking up his bracers that held the hidden blades. Just a, dusty, old Kirao, Ospin chuckles at his own joke as he saw Naruto putting his bracers on. Now, Naruto, I wish for you to stay here until you are fully healed to leave. The boy looks back with a surprised look, wah seriously. Wow, while I really appreciate that, but I don't want. 
Then think of it this way, by staying here you will relieve me of worrying about throwing an amnesiac boy into the streets, the kind man says, playing with Naruto's kindness into helping him. Alright then, if it makes you feel better ill stay, oh, since we are going to stay together for a while we need to introduce ourselves properly, my name is Naruto Uzumaki. It's nice to meet you Mr. Ospin. The hero of the elemental nations happily states as he raises his hand. Likewise young man. My name is Ospin, and for now that's it, I hope your stay is a pleasant one, the man shakes Naruto hand in a friendly manner. XXXXXXXXXXX a year later XXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXX
but I still be sticking on my work with this jacket, if I manage to complete the rest of the work, I won't need any weapons. Ospin chuckles, hey, well perhaps you can achieve what I wasn't able to, but for now please come down and help me prepare dinner. By which you mean I will preparing the whole dinner myself, sorry dad, but you can't cook to save your life, the last time you cooked you almost burned the whole house down. Ospin laughed sheepishly while taking a sip of his coffee, yeah, that was one hell of a fire, and the expression on Glinda's face when she found out how the fire started was simply priceless. XXXXXXXXXXX at night XXXXXXXXXXXX Naruto was cooking some meatloaf and preparing a soup when he heard the door of open, welcome back dad. The boy just finished setting up the table and got dinner ready, he saw his father walk in with a very attractive woman right behind him, her name is Glinda Goodwitch, and she is the closest thing to a friend his father has. Ah, Naruto I am glad to see you are well, the woman sincerely says as she takes her seat at the table. Naruto looks her over while serving her food, she is a middle-aged woman that has very light blonde hair tied back in a bun with a curl hanging down the right side of her face, her eyes are bright green and she wears thin ovular glasses, she has teal hanging earrings with a small bead identical to her earrings on her collar. She wears a white long-sleeved suit that exposes part of her chest, and puffy sleeves that tighten near the wrist before spreading back out near her hands. Her lower body has a black business skirt with buttons running in a vertical line up the front of it and lighter black brown stockings. She wears black boots with brown heels, and wears a tattered cape that is purple inside and black on the outside, decorated by a row of diamond shaped brown beads going horizontally across her cape. Above this line of beads appears an emblem of a tiara that is her personal symbol. All in all, a drop dead gorgeous beauty that could be passes off as Tsunade's younger sister though she is a hundred times stricter and Naruto knows for a fact, she doesn't gamble, the woman looks at him with calm gaze, is something wrong Naruto? No, no, everything is fine, anyway, tonight we're having midnight soup made from my garden's nyx roots and some meat I bought from the market, I also made a meatloaf with herbs I also use from my garden, and I know you don't like eating meat so I made a salad for you instead Ms. Goodwitch, Naruto says with a smile as Glinda gave a curt nod, due to many years of knowing others Naruto can tell she was smiling, on the inside. Thank you for thinking of me Naruto, also you can call me Glinda, I am not your teacher, yet, the strict teacher says with an invisible smirk as Ospin took his seat in front of his colleague. So, this dinner is about me joining an academy? Naruto went to the point while Goodwitch nods approvingly. Yes, I heard from Ospin that all three of the four great academies had sent letters, representatives, and also, gifts to you since you've been on the top rank spot, the blonde woman announces, causing Naruto to sigh. I am not that good, I only rank fifth, besides, that top ranked girl, Pira if I remember correctly, should be getting stuff like that too right? Naruto argues, making his father chuckle. He, that sort might have been my fault, you see when a headmaster gets to say, while my son is more talented than I thought many people tend to take such comments seriously, Ospin jokes as the two other blondes roll their eyes at the same time. Ospin was always the man to calm others down and in many cases wouldn't be the one to start fights, but sometimes he can really be, difficult. Why I am not surprised, oh, by the way Shade gave me some new goggles that have multi-vision function and, sand. Naruto says as he pulls out blue shaded goggles and a white glass filled with black sand, Haven sent me some nice robes from their school's uniform and are also willing to pay for my weapons expenses, as long as the prices are reasonable of course, and lastly Atlas, sent me their school uniform and a nicely written letter from the headmaster Ironwood, Naruto lists all the gifts he received, causing the two adults to sigh. But you already have made your choice, didn't you? Ospin asks humorously. Yeah, I am going to Beacon, besides, I am not too keen in going to schools that are halfway around the world, so I, may I be enrolled for the pre-classes? Naruto asks politely as Ospin took a sip of his soup while Goodwitch nods in affirmative. We already did that, we just wanted to know if that's what you really wanted, the blonde woman spoke truthfully, making Naruto smile happily. Thank you so much, I can't wait to begin the classes, oh, and dad? Hum? Ospin looks up to notice his son giving him the demonic eye and began to sweat a bit from it? No more instant food. I am leaving my recipes here so you can get a proper diet and not live off the school's cafeteria food, I've also written where all the cooking tools are placed and how everything in the kitchen is turned on and off, if I hear anything about a burning building at our location, well, 
let's just say that the punishment will be most severe, Naruto smirks as he actually did two memorable things. Made his farther sulk, and Glinda laugh a bit, or at least he likes to think so as watches her cover her mouth while her shoulders shook slightly. Yeah, this new life seems to be working out just fine. Naruto was standing in front of Beacon Academy as Glinda was walking behind him, are you okay Naruto? She asked if he was fine. Yeah, guess I am just a bit nervous about this school, Naruto said though it was a lie, he was wondering if he would meet someone that his alternate meet, that would be bad and awkward. Don't worry, it's just like cram school, just do your best, but also not to the point where you will exhaust yourself. The blonde woman advises her friend's adoptive son, for now, I suggest you go to town. It will be three days before class starts when you finish come back here and a student representative will come to take you to the boy's dormitory. Got it. He'll see you during class, Naruto winks playfully as he left the school grounds to head for the town. Goodwitch sighs before smiling to herself. He definitely reminds me of Ozpin when we were growing up. XXXXXXXXXXX in town XXXXXXXXXXX Naruto was walking around waving to some people who waved at him first. The young blonde was enjoying the day as he walks around before smiling at a particular shop. He walks in the store called From Dust Till Dawn. The boy was glad entering into a dust shop. Ah, welcome. Naruto looks to see a young girl around his age looking him. She reminded him of Tenten she wore Chinese style clothing had her hair into two buns. Hey, welcome to From Dust Till Dawn. How can I help you today? Just browsing through, thanks. Naruto announced as he looks at the row of different colored dust containers. Hey, what kind are these? Oh that's dust grind into that sand like quality, they're used for the more advanced types of huntsman weaponry to the newest forms of technology, the girl said as she looks at Naruto who wore his cloak, weird design kid, don't suppose that cloak has dust in it. Hum? No, I hear it's an old trick but it has more cons than pros, unless to a professional, it just looks that way to intimidate my foes. How much for the purest quality dust you have here? I say the Schnee grade, have a couple of those here, follow me, the girl said with knowable displeasure for the name she said. She led Naruto back into the counter where she went to the door behind the display case to bring out shining and deeply colored crystals. Schnee Elemental Collection, 100% purified dust that has more power than you can take. Naruto groans in disappointment as the girl gain a look of confusion, what's wrong? I need the grind up kind, the sand version. My weapon needs that kind with the highest purity, Naruto explains as the young girl nods and puts away the dust crystals. Sorry, though I wonder what kind of weapon needs that specific dust? Anyway, only regulars buyers can get the best dust from the Shni company, oh well, you sure I can't get you the ones I showed you? I can knock off 10% and other 5 for each different type you get, the girl asked hoping to be able to help the cute lad. It's not really a need but more of a want. It will last longer than others with impurities, but sure, I need some now can you grab me some water and wind dust? Naruto requested as the girl nods and walks to the dust tubes to pull out a dust extractor, the salesgirl finished filling two vials with dark blue and green colored dust before returning to the cashier. Okay, two elemental sand dust with the sales and cutie offer, the young girl winks at the blonde who laughs nervously, that's a total of 15 leans. Naruto smiles happily as he went to his wallet. That's a great deal, with all the dust prices rising I thought I might have to sell one of my kidneys. The girl giggles and nods, it's a good sales idea since dust have long expiration dates so my grandpa insisted that we keep our sales the same and we get repeated customers as we slowly go higher. Naruto nods as he grabs the dust extractor and stuff them into his cloak, but still not to be rude, do you any shop that has what I need? Sorry but I wait, yeah, I know this guy in the downtown area, Junior. He's an info broker ya know. The girl explains as Naruto nod to her, this guy can get you anything you want for a small price, but you have to be careful he has a lot of bodyguards, they just armed with guns and swords, but the real ones that are really dangerous are the twins. Naruto tilts his head in confusion, twins? Yes, Junior has a pair of huntresses as his top bodyguards, be careful with them, the girl warns the boy who takes it. See ya and thanks for the info. Naruto smiles as he left the shop not noticing a small black and red haired girl passing by him. XXXXXXXXXXXX 10 minutes late XXXXXXXXXXXX the boy was lost as he went to the most dangerous side of town trying to find the club where he can get some information about the high quality dust, 
He put on the hood knowing that a student should NT be out there and others want see his face. First rule back in leaving in a red light district. Never be seen in one. Ah, ye lost mate. A young boy's voice said behind Naruto who turns around in a defensive position, easy there mate I don't need to harm ya. Besides can ya harm me without these? The male said pulling out Naruto's hidden blades in both of his hands. Naruto realized that the boy pickpockets his only weapons, give those back. However, it fell on deaf ear as the pickpocket just plays with them before accidentally hit the switch for the knives. Ah, the legendary hidden blades. How about that? You some kind of artifact collector, miss. The blonde fumes at that insult, I am a boy. If anyone is a chick it's you, dude. The shinobi roars as he said his verbal tick again. In his last life he had that damn speech tick, but in this body has dude tick whenever he's piss. Naruto looked at the boy to look at his clothes, it was a thick and long tan and blue leather coat, with red sash that has black belt around it securing the coat in place, under it was a white gentleman's blouse that gave him a royal pirate look, also the small scar next to his eye. Then Naruto noticed a red headband around the male's head, the blonde took notice of the messy black hair that seemed to be damaged due to salty winds. Oi really? Damn that robe is not helping you, it's slender and all fancy pants, sides. You have a pretty mouth mate, the young man winks at Naruto causing him to shiver in disgust at the thought, anyway, here, in this world it'll get ya killed, the pickpocket joked passing Naruto his only weapons. Naruto smiles as he lifted up his robe sleeves and put on the buckles, before looking at the other male, your accent, you're not from here are you? Nope, I just came here to transfer to Beacon in the upcoming curriculum, I, I've been raised in the bosom of the sea. Me ma is the ocean and me pa is the strong winds, name's James. James kid or James the kid as me close mates like to hassle me with, so what's your name? James said as Naruto chuckles at this lad, he didn't seem to be bad, just a bit of a mischievous spirit. Just Oz, I've been here for nearly 20 minutes, James, Naruto said as he felt bad for lying but this kid could tell Glinda that he went to the RLD of town and she would kill him with that whip of hers. Huh, weird name. So where is Yah head and Ozzy? No way, a cute lad like Yah is here for the snacks. James joked as Naruto also laugh in good nature. I am looking for Junior's club, I need information from him. James nods as he walks ahead. I, I know the place follow me, lad, so you here for the boot camp? Naruto nods to that as James chuckled. Yeah, I already can go next year, but I want to keep honing my skills. James stops in his tracks before looking at Naruto with odd eyes, what? Something I said? Yeah, you sound, never mind that, so going to boot camp beacon for summer break for fun, man, you lad must be one of them workaholics me mom been telling me about. Kid laughs heartily as Naruto did as well, well, it's probably a good idea for this year anywho. Naruto tilts his head in confusion, how's that? The kid looks at him before slowing his pace a bit to walk with Naruto in a casual walk. See now, I've heard from some teachers that the top four students get the former teacher lounge which is like four rooms big, as their room for their school lives, it has a kitchen, multiple bathrooms and other things too. So if it's that so good why don't you go? Naruto asked his new friend with a smirk. Me? Ah oh, hell no, I commute to school with my girls, well maybe, I am still might return to Mistral Academy if my wee sis comes. James shrugs as Naruto nods at the possibility of extra work but no gain, ah, uh, anyway we're here, so my youth what's with the hood? Naruto walked past him smiling, that's for me to know kid, hope we can meet up to beacon this year. I, if not, I hope we can meet in the open seas, where it'll be twice the pirate my father ever was. Also, you better take care of my sister should she take my place at beacon, see ya around boyo. James said as he walked away from Naruto while raising his hand to wave Naruto off. Naruto smiles but raises an eyebrow when he noticed James' rear end swaying slightly, he walks like a woman, you walk like a chick. James tripped over his feet as Naruto snickers while retreating to the safety of the club. Naruto stood in awe as the club was raving loud with people and music, he moves into the dance floor looking around for the manager of the establishment to get some women winking at him and offering him a dance. The young man declines gently as he went to the bar. Hey, isn't this place a bit old for you kid? Naruto took off his hood to see a man looking at him, ah, oh, actually I was looking for a man named Junior, I need to get some information about some high quality dust. 
Well, you found me, I am Junior, the man said as Naruto looks at him and turns to him. However the man suddenly pointed at the belt that Naruto had along with yelling, the order of remnant. As soon as those words left his mouth everyone left screaming as the bouncers and bodyguards surrounded Naruto, kill him, you won't get paid if I am dead. Wait, I am not with any woe. Naruto dodges a sword from one of the goons. Naruto growls as he unsheathed his hidden blades, he runs towards one of the fighters and kick his face, then when another was in front of Naruto he tries to stab him, however, the experienced shinobi just use flip over the man as he grabs the shoulders before he touch the ground and toss the man with the strong momentum he had. He smiles when he thrusts his palms at the two goons with his aura blasting them through the doors he used. The boy continues to defeat more as two girls were watching from where the DJ plays the music, Mo, why must it be the cute boys? W well, at least, this one isn't just a pretty face, look he can defend himself like that other plan a few weeks ago. The other girl said with a noticeable stutter, so shall we sis. I'd be insulted if you didn't ask, oh wait, hold let me play the next song. Naruto smiles as all the goons were defeated on the floor, he, I feel so great with this better start, Naruto admits knowing this remnant Naruto was training his body to where Naruto, elemental nations, was more or less at before dying, he stops when he saw two amazingly beautiful girls were walking down the stairs to the DJ set and look at him coldly. Well, well, not bad kid, I have to admit that these guys are cannon fodder to newbie huntsmen and huntresses but we had every single one here, that in itself is pretty good, what do you think little sis? The girl wearing a white dress said as the other almost identical girl nods. Why yeah, still we never lost to anyone yet, this girl was wearing a red dress and red and black claws, and like the girl next to her they were both similar looking. Naruto raises his hands, listen. I am not with those order or whatever dudes, I just came here to ask where I can get woe. The blonde back flips from the swipe from the red girl's claw. Quit it, please, I don't. Oh crap. Naruto yells as the girl in the white dress try to slash his face with her heels that have razor edge blades attached to them. Naruto was noticed that in front and back where the twins were at he grins, at least I can see if my theory works, Naruto thought as he took off his cloak to show his jacket. It was blue with accents of black flames but the most eye-catching thing was two metal discs on the back of Naruto sleeve's hand. Water style. The reincarnated hero started as his cheeks puffed up as the disc on his left hand glowed blue. Water bullet. Naruto jumps up and spits out a huge water ball filling the dance floor with it. What the hell? Naruto laughs heartily as he finally did it, he can use jutsus again, however, it was short-lived as the girls attack him. The blonde blocks kick from the white dress girl with the metal circles of his jacket, successfully deflecting them as he saw the sharp heel girl jumps above as her red clad sister continues to assault on Naruto. The boy grabs the girl's wrists to stop her but notices her smirk as he let go and jumps back when the white dress girl slams down on where he was at working at the fact he knew they plan. Naruto's other metal disc turned green as he puffed out his cheeks again spoke out, wind style. Great breakthrough. The hero blows out intense wind causing the sisters to throw to a wall. Stop. Q quieted. The girls pleaded as Naruto stops walking towards them. The girls' faces became slightly afraid as his arm was moving towards them. However it stops into a gesture of offering them up. Huh? The sisters said together dumbfounded at that boy's kindness. Die. You hired dagger. Junior yells as he held up a missile launcher and shot it at Naruto and girls. No. Naruto yells as jumps forward with his body and felt the implosion on his chest before falling unconscious. XXXXXXXXXXXX. XXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXX
highlighted by heavy red makeup though not too much like a tramp but enough show her true beauty. She wears a red, strapless dress with black lining and her accessories include large red and white feathers above her left ear, black fur hanging off her shoulders and held at the front by a dark gray chain, red gloves, a black bow tied around her waist, and long red boots with very high stiletto heels. Her dress caught Naruto's eyes, it seems to design, or is decorated with, newspaper articles with the heading in New York La Papard di Albergetti. You beat us, not bad by the way, when you offered your hand Junior shot a missile. But it was going to hit me and sis, you jump in to save us. After beating the hell out of Junior we came back to our apartment to fix you up. As thanks for saving us, the girl in white finishes as Naruto smiles sweetly at them. Not realizing that they both blush from the innocent gesture. Naruto looks at her as well and notices that she was almost identical to her sister in both clothing and looks. Such as her white, strapless dress with cyan lining. But she has long black hair and though has the same pale green eyes as her sister they were highlighted by heavy cyan makeup. She also has a large white flower hairpin above her left ear, white feather scarf, and a silver pad with cyan and red feathers on her left shoulder, white gloves, a small silver bracer over the glove on her left arm a bow in the center of the topmost part of her bodice, a silver chained belt, cyan wings on the lower back, and long white boots with blades at the heels. Thank you truly, but what about you girls? What's going to happen to you? Naruto said hoping he didn't fire them. Well, we want work for Junior that's for sure, not when we were easily expandable to him, oddly the red dress girl said with no stutter, her face began to show rage as she continued but we might have to work for another boss like those strip joints. The white-haired girl sighs in exasperation, I hope we don't, in Junior's club all we had to do was serve drinks and flirt with the customers, arg, I don't want to wear some slutty jailbait bikini with horny men looking at my boobs. Not like you have any sis, the girl in red smiles happily as if trying to help only to get a fist on top of her head, owie. Naruto chuckles as he noticed that they had exceptional skills, why not join the Beacon Academy Bootcamp top 4 students get a free scholarship to there. The girl smiles at the thought before the white dress one groans, but we need a recommendation from a teacher. Oh I know one and if not my dad's the headmaster, Naruto said as the two girls were now smiling but then asked. Why are you being nice to us? Are you trying to get laid? The sharp heeled girl demanded. It's the right thing to do, was all Naruto said causing the girls to giggle. He really was innocent as they thought he was. I need a phone, to call my guardian and to get you in school. As they showed Naruto where they kept the phone, the girls went to their own room and spoke. Sis get me a ring, cause that kid is my new husband, said the girl in white. Melanie Malachite. The red clad teen girl chided her older twin sister, he's being kind to us, and we have an opportunity to be something great. And I am going to keep it that way, by getting into his pants Miss Goody Goody Multiades Malachite. Melanie said as her sister sticks her tongue. Naruto, you are so dead when you come home. The two girls jumped back at the female woman voice was heard. You think it was his mother Miltia? Melanie asked from fear. I hope not, still I hope this guy is fine, the red dress female said as Naruto came smiling though it was a bit strained. Well, I got you in, but I am in so much trouble, still how about I make some breakfast for us? Naruto said as Melanie's mouths out husband. Miltia sighs before taking Naruto's hand, sure here's the K kitchen, the girl opens the door and sweat drop, sis I thought you went to market yesterday? No, I said I was thinking about it, the other female said from the living room. Dummy, selfish, Miltia pouts out as Naruto pats her back. The blonde looks and nods, I can make some patty melts, not exactly a breakfast meal but good enough uh. Naruto started to but realized that he didn't know their names. Oh, my name is Multiades Malachite but please call me Miltia everyone does, and the lazy girl over the TV is my older twin sister Melanie Malachite, and sure it's good for what we got to eat, tell me what to do sir, the red dress girl said with a playful salute. Cool, chop some onions and grab me some rye bread please, Naruto said as he took some of the ground beef. Sure, gee, Miltia took a step back when her sister stare her deadpan style, what? You're taking my future husband. Melanie said as she looks at Naruto, Oi blondie, I've been meaning to ask, what the hell was that water and wind power, you did on us? Mel, phrase it better, multi-80s whines at her sister. 
That's my semblance. I can use my aura and condensed into energy attacks this jacket, Naruto shows the metal discs. Use dust to give me elemental variations. Naruto explains happily that now he can use his old life's powers again, he can be back in his prime all he needs is to practice to create his new version of his Rasengan. Food's done. Naruto said as he had three sandwiches for him and girls. Well, I hope we can be good friends. Sure. Me too. The girls respond to his kind optimism. XXXXXXXXXXX Beacon Academy XXXXXXXXXXX Naruto was looking at his father who spoke to start the boot camp. All of you came here to better yourselves. Others looking for fortune and fun. These next two months will push you further into true warriors. Now all of you will be paired up with a mock team for the duration of the camp. I assigned and gave each of you a color paper. Look for your same colored teammates and wait for Ms. Goodwitch for what to do next. Naruto had an odd expression on his face from his adoptive father's speech, weird, hum, I got white. Well, so do we. Naruto turns around and smiles at the sight of the Malachite twins, Miltia, Melanie. So we're a team for now? Talk about lucky? Looks like it, so who's our fourth member? Melanie asked as a girl came to them holding a white piece of paper. Anyo, is this team with the color white? I am the fourth member. A small girl said to them as the three experience fights look at her, this girl was plain as their chosen team color. The young girl was wearing a plain, white lace dress and light blue sandals though the only thing that was standing out was her black coat and a big rectangular case on her back, my name is, Namine, pleased to meet you. Nice to meet you, my name is Naruto Glinda was laying on her bed relaxing before the first day of boot camp starts. Hey, easy kid, I said pound me but not that hard. The aged beauty sat up straight hearing a female's voice. I can't help it, it's so tight it must have not been used in years. Oi, that sounds like a personal problem Naruto, now this time pound me and my sister. Alright. I'll ram both of you, B, gentle, Glinda face has never turned so red in her life hearing Ospin's adoptive son doing such. Immoral acts with his team. She quickly puts on her glasses and went downstairs still hearing the conversation since it was so loud. Ah, dude, I said harder, you sure you done this before? Naruto yells as a meek voice spoke after his. S sorry, but I d never done it with more than one person, I am still nervous about doing this. Sheesh, sis give Namine a message to ease her into to this, Naruto pound me again. Yosha. This time I'll go all out, oh my, it seems that I was right to let you do this with me. At that point Glinda put a hand around her nose as it leak out blood. Naruto. She yells and turned to the right hallway that the voices were coming from. Stop this, you aren't ready for, for, what in Dust's name are you doing? In the teacher's sights was Naruto and the white dressed girl's shoulders against a door while the red dress one was massaging them in a shoulders earnestly with a kind smile. Oh hey, sorry hold on a tick, Naruto politely said as he looks at the white girl, okay, ready Melanie? Ha, ha yeah, one more time. Melanie and Naruto step back from the door before the white clad female charges quietly with shoulder, then Naruto came and smacks it wide open, finally. Uh, 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 Glinda can only muttered watching Melanie walking out to get the other two girls. Sheesh, we've been trying to open that for an hour. Hey Miltia get our stuff, Namine, do whatever you want, Melanie ordered walking in as Naruto opened the door for her. Hey, hup. The red clad girl grunts as she picked up three luggage bags, ss sorry f for the r ruckus, Miltia said giving a polite nod to Glinda, Miltia smiles before closing the door. Please wait for me, Namine cried slipping in the room. Hold on, the blonde woman said as she tried to open the door but couldn't push it, are you serious? Naruto was sitting on a lazy boy chair, say what you will, but I will thank my dad for letting me grab the recliner. So are we going to ignore the fact that there's only three beds here? The white dressed twin asked. You girls can have it, all I need is my memory foam pillow, a nice book, and my recliner, the blonde said cracking out a book that was titled Silent Hill 2, oh, that got brutal so quickly. Well, good night, Namine bowed taking the farthest right bed. Yan yeah I need my ten hours of beauty sleep, come on sis, Melanie said walking to her bed. Naruto smiled before throw a book at the light switch to turn off the lights and quickly fell asleep. As all the members of the team were deep sleep, a shadowy figure entered the room not making a sound and walked up to Naruto's chair, 
and caressed his cheek. The being slowly walked back as it disappeared quickly and quietly just as it came. Naruto saw a gray fur hooded teen that was running after a man in white, Jacques. He roared as he blasted the man with a blood sphere from his fingertips. The man turned on his back to look at the frosted glare that belonged to the assassin that was going to kill him, please wait. The assassin stopped as he looked at the man with disgust, he has gray white hair and a pale complexion, he has a large gray mustache, and his eyes are a cold blue color, he is seen wearing a pure white double breasted jacket with a red handkerchief in the breast pocket, underneath which he wears blue shirt and vest and a gray white tie with the shni emblems printed on it, he has a silver colored ring on his right hand, what is it? I have a family winter shni fights for the freedom and well-being of others, Weiss shni is still under investigation, your wife is dead, and your son, well in a few years I might come back to kill him myself, Naruto heard the assassin promise the target strangely sounding familiar, you have wrong a race, knownly use them for cheap labor and many other things. Jacques flinched at the sight of assassin's blades coming out of the sleeves, he'll do anything please, I will give the animals more money, anything. No, nothing will please me then you suffering at this moment, rest in peak. The hell? The assassin turned showing Naruto his red eyes, who was that? My daughter, Jacques said angrily, have you no shame, killing a young girl? Be but, Jacques, kill, but protect innocent, the three rules. The man said before slamming his fist to break the nose of Jacques, and one more to let some steam out you stay there and I won't let you suffer in death. The assassin ran towards to see a young girl being choked by a man, don't touch that young sweet maiden. Wah oof. The assassin tackled the man catching the girl who was immediately coughing. Please tell me you're okay my lady. The assassin pulling down his hood, breaking one of the major rules but he needed to know if she was. Naruto eyes widen as he saw something that shocked him to the core, the man holding the white haired girl, was himself but his blonde hair had white tips and his eyes were red eyes that slowly receded away turning into an icy blue color, miss. I cough I am alright, oh. The girl face turned red looking at the other Naruto's face, you're ah, look out. The blonde throws himself over the girl while gasping in pain as the other assassin stab Naruto's back, ga, run. W what? The young girl said before pushed her to the door. Run. Naruto gasped as he saw the other version of him tackle the man to the window, then watched as the girl rushed in to look out screaming, no. Naruto, 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 slap asterisk ow. The fuck dude? Naruto yelled looking at the Malachite twins and Amine looking at him with worried on their faces, what? You alright? Militia asked leaning in close to Naruto's face. Yeah, why? Naruto asked as the red dress girl to show a mirror to Naruto who was crying, wah. Why you been like that since we woke up, Namine said as she noticed the clock in their room, oh, it's time for breakfast. Yeah, maybe I need something to eat, Naruto said taking advantage of the situation, what the hell was that dream, was that the other Naruto's past? He was an assassin? However he couldn't think about it as the smell of daily breakfast items that Naruto loved filled his nose and took control of his body, bacon. Kya, the three girls turn into comically chibi forms as they were flung by the speed of Naruto crashing down the door to head to the kitchen. Did that happen? Melanie asked standing patting off the dust that collected on her clothes. Why yeah it did, the blonde haired female said with stars circling above her head. Melanie was about to say something before looking around, hey sis, where'd you go? Help, the lightly dressed colored girls look up to see Miltia whose back is connect to the ceiling fan, oh, I don't know how, but my panties is stuck to the fan thing. PFFT, ill help, Namine said reaching up as Melanie continued to laugh at her sister's predicament. XXXXXXXXXXXX a few minutes XXXXXXXXXXXX Naruto and his team were sitting in the cafeteria as other students also started to enter in as well, so where did you guy came from before coming to Beacon? Namine asked cutting her pancakes into small pieces but blushed as she spoke again, B but you don't have to, I am just making small talk. Me? Naruto said stuffing down a fistful of bacon down his throat, GLUP, I don't have any memory of where I was living when I was like I don't 14. Anyway, I've been living here in Vale with my adoptive old man. 
Oh, I see, sorry stop, it's fine, you didn't know, Naruto said as he reached out and ruffled Namina's hair. Sis and I are originally from Atlas, Melanie started sipping a cup of tea as Miltia spoke up next. We, have some issues with our parents and left, and you know the rest, the girl look at Naruto deadpan styled as he chuckled nervously. Okay, this is awkward, Naruto say as he joked before looking at Namine who was pulling up her rather big coat, isn't that a bit big for you? Eh, oh my coat? The blonde girl lifts up her shoulder to make Naruto nod at the statement. The boy noticed it was all black leather coat that covered Namina's entire body if she closed the large zipper in the middle of the jacket. It had a silver chain around the neck and a two little silver things that can close or open up the hood, speaking of which the hood was the design to hide the whole face as much as possible when used, I guess it does, but it belonged to my big sister Lerxine, my family always wear this coat when are training to be huntsmen or huntresses, but, this is a hand-me-down we, can't afford a new one at the moment. I see. Well I know you will make them proud, Naruto said with a kind tone as Namine smiled sweetly at his words. Naruto, the four students looked to their side to see Ospin walking to them, I see you and the rest of Team White are enjoying each other company. Hey old man, Naruto grinned as Ospin chuckled at the greeting, the grey-haired man looked at Naruto's three female companions. I hope you girls are fine with Naruto being a member of your team for now, the man said politely, if not I can place him in another team. And no, he's fine, right Melanie? Miltia asked her sister with a smile, though when Ospin turned the red dress girl Miltia glared at her sister. Melanie giggled as she nod her head, yes, Naruto is a gentleman he offered us the beds of the room while taking the chair to sleep in. Um, he's a great guy, I like him around, Namine said though was confused at Ospin's slightly widened eyes, something I said? Oh no, I am just glad Naruto is starting to date. I am glad to see my son oof. Ospin twitched as he felt a certain foot stepping in his toes. Dad, can you not play the embarrassing dad shtick? Naruto warned obviously hiding current action which is stepping on his father's toes. Right, he'll leave, Ospin said but look at the students for a serious moment, training begins an hour, prepare yourselves it is not an easy task. Naruto nodded to his father as the headmaster of Beacon left, that was a thing. XXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXX
and with single motion used his hidden blade to stab the mon's armor as he fell clutching his chest in pain. Noticing another soldier was coming from behind him, Naruto spins around the soldier he stabbed to escape the attack. However another soldier was coming towards making the blonde grab the spear to make the armored clothes then punch him in the neck, as the man fell unconscious as Naruto took his spear to sidestep then waved his arms to the right to hit a man in the torso as he was flung back. Now two more were around him as Naruto quickly grabbed a soldier's arm that had a sword in his hand to deflect the other soldier's blade then kicked him, while spinning around and stabs the sword into a dead tree with the soldier unable to move with Naruto wrapping his scarf to the sword's handle. Whoa! Naruto said quickly bending his knees as he barely avoided a side attack from a spear, and another by cart wheeling away to a small space where he was surrounded, damn it no choice. Naruto smiled as he spread out his arms slightly to slowly reveal his hidden blades and then notice white glowing feathers around him, the soldiers seemed to see them too as they were taken aback from what Naruto can tell due to their body language, as Naruto fought against those who recovered the shock spell, he noticed something, and quickly turned his head to the left to see a white robed man walking away from the army. He walked away as if the soldiers didn't notice his existence, the white robed man turned to let Naruto know, that he wasn't an illusion to the blonde. Naruto realized something about the man, on his left shoulder was a, symbol and also took a look at a missing a ring finger at his left hand, however, Naruto's caught a soldier getting too close with a sword swing, and quickly counter it by raising his hand with his hidden blade too. Ching Naruto eyes widen in shock as his one of the two hidden blades snap from the attack, but he felt his arm moving back more than it was supposed to and realized the blow of the sword was too powerful to shake it off, causing the blonde to fell down from losing his balance. Suddenly white covered his eyes as now Naruto saw a corridor leading to the outside where the soldier who shot him with the arrow was standing, he felt someone push forward only for the man to raise a hand as if to tell the person who pushed Naruto to leave him alone. I am sorry this had to happen, but you trespass our new home, the tribe believes letting you go is too risky rather than to recruit you, I believe Raven would have liked you joining us, if it gives you any comfort, the man said tying a noose around Naruto's neck, what was it that your people say? rest in peace. Naruto saw the wooden plank for him to walk off. I am so sorry, the person said as he gently nudged Naruto to the plank, just think of your loved ones and it would be quick. Naruto turned his head to see an angle flying by making him wince as he felt a shine hit, his, I, Naruto looked toward that same spot to let it hit him again, and again. Naruto lips curled up as he looked back at the leader of the army, don't worry it will be quick. The man sighed, forgive me, in fluid motion the man pushed Naruto off as the blonde quickly saw a flying and spinning katana cut the noose's rope before it had time to break his neck. Naruto. Naruto turned to see a blonde man, wearing blue and white robes with leather armor around it, grab his hand while they both fell to a hidden cave, ha 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 ha, devil take me read, you and your sister are so crazy. Naruto chuckled as he said, shut your gob boyo, do you get what we came for? Wait, how do I know that? The man nodded, Mary got it, we got the stolen artifact from the bandit tribe. Good mission accomplish, suddenly Naruto saw everything stop as he all he saw a white, hello? Naruto asked. Don't worry, you're done and got all passing marks, your team is still finishing their tasks, Ospin's voice echoed throughout the room. Sure, huh? Naruto started to speak but stop as he room changing now it was filled with grass and flowers with a young woman wearing blue robes that were identical to his, whose Naruto started before the woman went to attack a woman wearing a white button shirt and a plaid skirt. Give me back my brother now, the woman warned as her voice was laced with hate and fury. Haha, it's too late, I broken Naruto to the point he is too scared to go outside, he's mine now, my new favorite toy. You know, I really starting to think women will be the death of me. The two girls and the Uzumaki turned to see another Naruto walking towards them with a limp. Oh my Kami, Naruto thought as he saw the other version of him walking forward, this Naruto's left arm was hanging limply in the air completely disconnected, his hair was covering his right eye which had blood leaking down to his chin and lastly his face and neck was covered in bruises, Mary, you alright? Naruto, the girl said with tears falling down her cheeks, I should be saying that you dork. Damn it. The other girl screams rushing towards Naruto with a black sword, you're not supposed to leave the playroom. Yeah, I won't listen to you anymore, being tortured by someone for nearly a month will do that, 
The other Naruto said as he smiled, let's go marry. Yeah, little bro, the girl throws a knife at the other female as she dodged by jumping. Too bad good night. The wounded Naruto said as he did an axle kick on the woman making land to the ground unmoving. Naruto watched as the other version fell to his knees as the girl ran to him, Naruto, please stay with me, please don't leave me alone. Mary, I thought you hated me, the other Naruto said softly as he passed out making the room turn white again. Was that, the other Naruto's life, the one he had before I took over? Naruto Uzumaki said softly, he had a sister, I have a sister. Hello. Glinda said opening the door show her head, Naruto? Your team is done with their tasks, but your door wouldn't open, is everything okay? Naruto closed his eyes as he took a deep breath, yeah, he'll be there, he said before lifting his head to the ceiling, he will have a whole training camp to finish first before trying to find the other Naruto's sister. The girls had been watching Naruto clean his hidden blade parts for the past hour, hum, I think it's good enough, he said, then set about quickly reassembling the machine. The girls were shocked at the fact that the process only took about two seconds, flicking the blade out and back in again. He nodded, yep, seems good. Naruto, that was. Melanie got out, what? Naruto looked at them, I am just cleaning my blades, he shrugged, while he might not remember his old life as his remnant self. The muscles remember every step when cleaning and assembling it, so dad told me that our team is the lead in getting the new room. He said as the girl high fived each other, therefore, I wanted to celebrate, let's go to the city and get some food. Oh, taking us out on a date? Melanie smiled wryly, you should NT have? H hey, I am just being nice, the blonde blushed, so? You're still taking us out, the white dressed girl said. S sis is our right, the red dressed twin smiled sweetly. Really? Namine asked, big sis Lerxine told me not to go to dates, but she did give advice. All she said was go for the neck and don't stop until the body goes limp. That moment the three teens were slightly horrified at the info, your sis sounds scary. Is she? Namine tilted her head cutely, she basically told you to kill, the twins answer in unison holding each other in fright. Huh, that explains why my brothers told me not listen to her, the blonde girl said aloud. You just realize that now? Naruto and the twins cried out comically. Eep. The girl cowered in fear as she turned small from the loud voices, as sorry, she cried out. No, no no no, don't cry, the twins said feeling guilty for their actions. I am fine, the blonde girl said as Naruto pat her head. Come on let's go. Line break the team walked down the street as they look around the city, so what do you girls feel like eating? Maybe some sweets? Melanie thought, or have some coffee, Miltia suggested. I would like a sandwich. The young blonde female said as she readjust her black jacket. Okay, okay, hold on, Naruto said, looking around before noticing a building, how about we go to that cafe? That one. The girls pointed to three different buildings, no that one. Just pick, Melanie deadpanned, look let's go to, Naruto looked at the one Namine pointed, to that one. Boo, the twins pouted at him, and so the four of them went over to the said cafe and when they did, they were greeted by a couple of maids. Hello. I blame you, Naruto deadpanned a blushing Namine. I always wanted to visit one from what Sakes and Zigbar always said, she blushed darkly. Dare I ask what? Naruto's eye twitched, and no, she squeaked as though they were lead to a booth. What is your order master? The girl beamed at Naruto. M master? Namine squealed with a heavy blush, I think she's trying to get a big tip, Melanie sighed. I'll just have coffee, Naruto sighed as well, dark chocolate cake for me with a sea caramel latte, Miltia added. Tea the, Namine blushed at the name before speaking up once more, lovey made sandwich with extra eggs. Two orders of steak burgers, three large milkshakes, and some muffins if you have any, Melanie order as the maid eye twitch at the girl's rudeness. Are right away milady, she said walking away, my god you three, what is up with you today? Naruto asked exasperated. What? They asked, well militia is fine, but Namine are you some kind of otaku or something? And why are you angry at the waitress Melanie? He asked as militia stuck at her tongue at her sister who glared at her. Well, I wanted to come here for the experience, the blonde girl shyly said. I just hate places like this, me and sis almost have to work at this degrading places, 
Melanie growled leaning into her seat. Well that I can understand, Melanie, Naruto sighed, before looking to Namine, I don't know about you though. My, family is very poor, Namine sighed sadly, in fact, this boot camp is the only way to have my chance to be a huntress, we can't afford such money so we have to pass the test for any school to get a free scholarship, I don't really have a weapon save for my brothers and sisters hand me downs. Namine, Naruto muttered, we know how that feels, my our parents don't fund us, the twins said as the red dress girl sigh, so we work at the bar for many years until Naruto gave us this chance. Yeah, but hey, Naruto is treating you, so eat as much as you want, Melanie smirked as the boy chuckled but nod. Just, go easy, here you go. Your order is served, the maid said, presenting them their food. And for you milady. The girl leaned closely as the blonde huntress blushed, I made with my love, she said as the blonde's hair suddenly stood up as lightning started to discharge around her. TT thank you, Namine, calm down, Naruto sweat dropped. Lightning? Militia said touching Namine only to be shocked, Ai, she cried before sucking on the finger. Well, I am digging in, Melanie said, before starting to wolf down the food. Heh. This is a weird way to celebrate, Naruto sighed as he sipped his coffee. Pfffffffffffft. What the hell is this? The three girls blinked comically as they were covered in coffee. Thankfully, their auras prevented the burning sensation, not good? They asked together blankly. The flavor is sucks, and too much beans then water. Ugh, he pouted, while he wasn't a coffee drinker in his old life, he still drank it when he needed it. Uh, sorry he said after looking at the girls drying their clothes off. It's fine, Namine said, I have to admit it would taste better, cafes in Atlas must always pass a coffee test before they can set up, Melanie said as she sighed, amateurs all over here, I can't find one good coffee anywhere. Naruto smiled looking down as his coffee before, suddenly. Flashback hey, a young girl wearing white robes was in front of him, you should really drink something Naruto, mom will kill me if you were sleeping on the job. Naruto shook his head as he nodded, sorry, I'll brew some coffee up. Flashback and the blonde eyes realized that the girls were talking as he saw their plates were clean, wah, what just happened? He whispered to himself wondering why he saw that image. Naruto, are you okay? Namine asked after noticing Naruto was looking at them. You kinda spaced out, Melanie said, did I? Naruto asked. Yeah, yawn, oh dear I think I still have some sleep in me. Melita said with a pout. Naruto noticed the coffee he had and smiled, Sir can I use your coffee here? He asked the owner who was old man with graying hair and wore butler uniform. Hum? What for? The blonde took off his top portion of his robe to smile confidently, to teach you how to brew real coffee. In few minutes the group was in the kitchen as Naruto was slowly making coffee. This is so boring, the white dress girl complained. Patience is a virtue, Namine, Naruto said, unfortunately, it's growing thin, Namine slightly deadpanned. Well too bad, don't say that so casually, your hair is still up, Melita pointed out and up with her finger at Namine's lightning charged hair. I just finished please stop, Naruto sighed, presenting a cup to everyone, here try this, this is way better than the coffee I drank. The twins and Namine all looked at each other before they each took a cup and a sip. Well. Naruto asked, I never tasted such delicious coffee, Melanie said sweetly looking down at the cup with fondness. The acidity, the richness of the roasted beans, Miltia moaned almost sensually. And there's no bitterness, Namine said softly slowly enjoying the moment. Thank you, Naruto smiled bashfully, hey, he looked down slight with his smile never leaving, I guess the old Naruto loved enjoying coffee, he thought while grabbing his own cup and pfffffffft, what the hell? This still tastes like crap. The blonde noticed that the girls were giving him deadpan looks as they were covered in coffee yet again, we noticed. Oops, he laughed sheepishly, line break the team entered their room, after using Naruto as a battering ram. As the girls smiled, so what do you think it's this week's test? The blonde haired girl said taking off her jacket to move around freely. Dad didn't say, the boy said as he rubbed his head that had a comical bump. Always the mysterious one that guy, Melanie sighed. You know he's always gonna pull a fast one on anyone, Miltia added. Yeah but he's a cool guy, Naruto smiled, 
Old man does act sometimes like a kid when he wants to. That reminds me, Namine started, that video of you fighting Grimm in that castle was so cool, when did you do that? Grimm? Naruto echoed remembering his battle was against bandits. Yeah although it was weird since when they surrounded you the test says you pass, the twins said as they put on make on their sister's face. Wait, run that by me again? Naruto the boy said as the twins took out a scroll and show a video of Naruto doing the same thing he did yesterday, but instead of the bandits it was grim. But, but that wasn't, he said as the video turned to black and he was standing on a hill of defeated grim, what the hell? Naruto. What's wrong? Namine asked, I only fought against humans, not grim and I was almost hanged when they surrounded me, the blonde announced shocking his temporary team. Wait humans? Melanie asked shocked. But you were fighting Grimm, Miltia said. H huh? Now Naruto was really confused. This isn't a joke. We were all there in the stadium watching from the live feed of your memories. There were no other people. Maybe you're having an allergic reaction to the coffee? Namine said, placing a hand on his forehead. No, I am not. Naruto shook his head. Maybe I am just seeing things. It's fine, the twins said before taking a sit on Naruto's recliner. Oi, not my chair. Sorry but it's taken, they said playfully. You have beds. He roared as he grabbed the chair and shook them off of it, this is refined grim leather. Ah, they pouted, don't give me that look, it's not gonna work on me. You have an odd liking to that chair, Namine giggled as she watched Naruto spray it with some kind of polisher. It's grim quality at its finest, poor bastards, the twins said taking out teacups, why buy that? Aren't they like cheap and attract grim? That's what the polisher is for. Oh some kind of resist to the attraction. The red dress twin said while eating a chocolate covered cookie. No, it just makes it shine. Naruto said showing his chair now sparkling like a gem. The twins and Amine could only sweat drop at Naruto's rather eccentric attitude. Why? To be honest, I like the smell of the chair. I don't know why, Naruto said as he remembered that in an odd store that some lady had this low price for it. Knowing it was cheap and nice to sit on was enough for Naruto to get but it was also odd calming feeling to it. You, like the smell of it? Melanie raised an eyebrow. What is wrong with you? Miltia asked, feeling a bit disturbed. It smells like bad wet dog, Namin stated, at least with the spray it has a nice smell. It makes it more authentic with the smell, Naruto said. I whatever the girls were going to say was stopped as Ospin enter the room, with Glinda as they fall down. You weren't kidding about that stubborn door, the gray haired man said as he picked himself up. Huh? Oh, hey dad, Naruto blinked. Hello, son. The next test is coming and we're trying to reach you, but that door was rather thick because we spent 10 minutes trying to yell at it, the tea drinking man said with a nod. Oh, my bad, Naruto said sheepishly. I soundproof the door. Why? The blonde woman said as she saw Naruto and the girls getting their gear ready. Nothing, I'll see you later, come on girls, he said before running off. Wait, Ospin started and tried to open the door, but we really need to replace this door. Line break Naruto and his team were waiting at the training classroom as Glinda and Ospin appeared, both comically tired, ahem, today is your middle task of the boot camp, you'll be facing off the best teams from the first years, which will be second years if you succeed in passing this camp. Glinda nodded as she tapped into her tablet, the top class of this camp is Team White, please come up here. Naruto and his three female teammates step up to the arena as they all nodded to each other, watching as Ospin smiled, since you're the top of your field. Well be going against the top of the first years? Naruto finished his father's train of thought as the man nodded kindly. Yes, Team CFVY please come in, he raised his voice as four members Naruto never saw came in. One instantly caught his attention, a tall teen and athletic looking young man with shaved short black hair and tanned skin. Wearing mostly pale green and brown attire, he has a long short sleeved robe. Which he wears on one shoulder over a black muscle shirt, the robe is fastened at the waist by a leather armored belt with two pouches on it, he also wears brown pants and black and green boots, his left arm bears a five layer soda, which extends up past his shoulder. His weapon is affixed to his back with a padded brown strap slung over his shoulder, he also wears a pair of bracers as well as a pair of black gloves with green plates on the backs. 
A girl next to him made Naruto smile as how close to how the boy was off her. Protectively but not a smothering way, the girl has long, brown hair and brown eyes, she also has a pair of long, brown rabbit ears, making her easily identifiable as a faunus, a short, long-sleeved brown jacket with a golden zipper, brown shorts with golden detail and black leggings comprises her combat gear, she wears a black, semi-translucent undershirt beneath her jacket, along with golden spalders and vambraces on both arms, as well as a similar belt, and her heel and toe are likewise protected. The next girl was looking at Naruto, almost leering at him. Before smirking and nodding to herself, S.A. teenage girl with fair skin. Short dark brown hair, and dark brown eyes, she has wavy locks on one side of her face. Dyed with a gradient that starts in dark brown and transitions to caramel. Her clothes consist of a long, cocoa-colored shirt with a dark brown waist cincher. She wears long, dark brown trousers with ribbons on the left side and a brown belt with bullets, above it, she wears another cocoa-colored belt of bullets with a gold crosshairs buckle, what appears to be a drape of black skirt hangs on her right side, she wears a pair of dark brown, high-heeled leather boots with buckles. The girl also dons a number of accessories, such a bracelet with black roses as decoration. Black gloves and necklaces accompany these, she wears a beret of a darker brown and a pair of black, wire-rimmed aviator sunglasses, she is seen holding a black shoulder bag with gold studs, which is held by a bandolier strap. Lastly, Naruto felt his instincts were heightened and alarmed, as he saw a teenage boy with dark skin and dark, messy copper hair that has a long fringe and a cowlick, he wears a sleeveless, muted orange zipper vest with black lining and a high collar, a pair of black jeans, and brown, laced shoes, his eyes appear to be pure white, giving off the appearance that he is blind, his arms are covered in scars, and he has a vertical scar on his lips. He also wears a pair of long black gloves and has several pouches attached to his belt. Team CFVY, Leader Coco Otto, Fox Alistair, Velvet Scarlatina, and Yatsuhashi Daichi. Ospin smiled as Coco pulled her glasses slightly to meet Naruto's gaze. Hey, nice robes, she winked at him earning a glare from the twins. Thanks love the bag, he chuckled as Coco smirked at that. First team to win by knockout, low aura level, or ring out will be the victor, the headmaster stated as he step away with Glinda who started up the energy wall, begin. Both teams were suddenly surprised when two members suddenly started to throw punches. Whoa Naruto, the twins said as the blonde leader barely escape a well throw punched. Fox, the faunus girl shouted as the blind team ducked to evade Naruto's high kick to sweep his leg, sending in the air. However the blonde spun in midair as he brought his heel to slam against Fox's head, both of the males hit the floor with a loud thud, as they lay there. Peefed, eheh, ehehe, haha, both teams were watching both Naruto and Fox shake slightly as the blonde laughed, standing up at the same time, they both saw their aura levels in the big screen was now 75%, wow, I didn't know someone was pretty good at fighting. Ditto, Fox chuckled as he cracked his neck, Coco, ill handle him. Sure, the leader said before nodding her team to attack. Fox and Naruto however stared each other down, as both rushed forward to attack each other, Fox flipped back when Naruto tried to punch forward, making the blonde fall forward, the blind teen smirked as he jumped up to send fist crashing down to Naruto's chest, but gasped when the white-robed teen clutched his arm and twisted him to the floor to sit on his chest punching his face. One, two, three. Four hits were all that Naruto got until Fox recovered enough to push him off. The two once again took some space, as they circle each other almost like junkyard dogs waiting to bite the other dog's neck. Fox leans in, cursing that fact as he tried to pull himself back only for Naruto to lunge at him as he tackled the teen in. Fox smiled as he kicked the huntsman in training away. Naruto however threw a knife at him, causing Fox to avoid in time but saw a white fabric in his sights. You before he can say anything else the knife came back around as it wrapped around his neck. Get over here, the blonde yelled as he tugged on it violently as the dark skin neck flipping over to his direction, Aura. He screamed slamming his fist to Fox's face as it caused him to be flung to the wall and crash through it. Naruto gave chase as Fox got on his hands and knees glaring at Naruto as he slammed his fist together to pump himself up. Naruto sends his foot first as Fox punched it. The blonde jumps off the fist as he tries to send dozens of flying chops as Fox to avoid each one to slam his knee to Naruto's neck, 
Falling down catch his breath Fox punched the back of the robe teen head, and jumps up to use his elbow on Naruto, to be caught off guard when the blonde turn and jump foot first into the red-haired teen's side, Ga. Naruto grabs Fox's arms and slam him into the floor, your pin. He roared as the dark skin teen tried to escape but sighed with a weak smile. I give, Naruto. The two teens looked up to see Glinda glaring up them, the two of you are. Fine Glinda, boys will be boys, Ospin chuckled as he moved aside for Team White and members of CVFY to move in to see their friends. Naruto, Fox what happened? The two chuckled as they looked at each other and gave them two large grins, it, it's an animal thing, they lamely said as Coco helped Fox up. We lost? He asked as the leader nodded, Velvet went after you, then me and Yatsuhashi followed her, so we lost as the blonde girl was the last one to leave, Coco chuckled, as she saw Naruto being helped up by the sisters. We thought Melanie started as her sister glared at Naruto. You were fine, until you crash into the wall, Miltia said not stuttering once as Naruto chuckled. I said it was an animal thing, I thought he gave me a challenge and he did. Wham! xxxxxxxxxxxxxx Naruto placed a ice pack on his face on a black eye given to him by the sisters when they punched him, so we win, he said as the girls nodded as they walked to their room. That's right, a lot of the other teams seemed to be angry but it was fine in the end, Namine stated as she pulled up her black jacket, we're ahead with so many points that we can relax a bit. I wonder though, I mean will we be still a team after this? Naruto said as the girls seem a little down, oh well, he'll find a way to make stay together if you guys want. The twins smiled sweetly before lifting their noses in the air, nope. Ah, Naruto laughed knowing that their upstuck joke was their way of loving him. Namine stood behind them with a small smile, I want you to know, you guys are, I am glad to meet you. The three members looked at Namine with wide eyes before they looked at each other and nodded, hey Namine, let's have a party, the twins said as they grabbed her hands leading her to Naruto's chair. Ah my chair, he complained while the girls ignore him. So well get pizza, snacks, and drinks. They continue as Namine eyes light up to the idea more and more. Naruto shake his head, yar, yar, okay let's do it, he said walking behind the chair, but let me sit on my chair. Eek. The girls squealed as they fell into the floor, jerk, they all yelled with tears in their eyes. They all were silent, before laughing, and laugh some more. Naruto really hoped that he can stay with them even after this boot camp. Naruto, who is shirtless, was doing pull ups as Namin was counting his reps. How many is that? He asked, letting go as he felt his arms starting to give away. About 150, Namine replied, smiling as she passed him a towel. The former shinobi took it with a smile, You are quite the woman, he said, patting her head, as he saw her as younger sister on how she constantly always seeks his help. Thanks. Here, she said, also passing him a bottle of water, you need to stay hydrated. Suddenly before she could reach the blonde, the twins pulled her away, no Namine, he's supposed to serve us, the white clad sister said, as if informing a younger sister the way the world works. Huh? Why? Namine looked confused staring at the sister back and forth, I am just giving him water. But he's supposed to pamper us, the red clad sister stated, sighing, and treat us like princesses. Great, I am the lackey of the group, Naruto placated, taking a page from Kakashi peaceful, lazy ways, but you guys will have to know I take the path of wandering, aka, he'll never do it. But Naruto, the twins whined, it's almost time for the last test, the female blonde member of the group said softly. The other three looked at the female blonde looking sadly downward, I know we're going to pass, but this is still sad. Why do you say that, Namine? Naruto asked we're gonna stick together like we always have. The twins also nodded to this, as the huntsman in training pointed to the calendar, look we got the last day off tomorrow, so let's spend the day together and you choose the stuff to do. Really, you will? Melanie asked excited, just don't spend our entire lean if we're going on a shopping spree, Naruto said, and you girls are using your own lean. Ah, oh, Melanie slumped, don't give me that, remember the last time you went on a shopping spree? The twins had the decency to look embarrassed as Naruto reminded them when he allowed them to get food, for nearly a month they had to eat sugar cookies and high class tea as they used the rest of the money on cute toys, clothing, and other things. Which is why I am going to set allowances for you both, Naruto said. We're not kids. 
we're not going to buy things just because it limited time, like tourists or something. The two sisters said until Naruto pulled up a cookie in the shape of a cat in a cute box, Melanie blinked, it was on sale, he turned it to show limited time flavor, now it was time for Miltia to speak, it was a once in a lifetime flavor, pulling a magnifying glass under the first words returns every winter, we just bought the he kicks his chair as the recliner part burst out dozens of the cookies. Okay, they said in defeated tones as Naruto was the type to kick them down if it means winning. That's it. I am definitely putting you both on allowances, Naruto deadpan as he gave them each a couple of lean, he then turned to Namine, as for you, he said before pulling a gold colored lean card that sparkled, spend it on whatever you want, my treat. T thanks, the young woman said as Naruto patted her head, before yawning, yeesh, I gotta sleep. This is so not fair, the twins murmured in depression. Line break the next day, Namine giggled to herself, holding the sparkling gold lean. I wonder what else I should buy today, she asked herself. Maybe something new? Naruto suggested the twins were carrying 10 bags in each arm, or at least something that you like. Let's see, Namine pondered as she looked around then noticed something in the window, suddenly putting her hands and face on the glass, on the display were cute teddy bears. I have never met a girl who wasn't into shopping, Melanie stated wearing designer sunglasses as she lowered them to wink at some boys enjoying some that walking into a wall when being dazzled by her beauty. You and me both, Miltia added, he, you like those? Naruto chuckled as he and Namine were staring into the toy store. Yes, Namine said before looking behind the glass, there's nothing really nice here, she sighed, other than the teddy bears. You want them then? Naruto asked as he would buy them for the girl if she felt embarrassed about buying one at her age. No, I Naruto? The group looked to see James walking down the street, James? The blonde asked as the teen waved at him, the pirate theme man was holding a bag of fancy looking bread and treats, in fact he was currently eating a scone. I finally caught up with you, James said with a smile, placing the food into the bag, I was worried you left town or something. Is something wrong? Naruto asked, eyeing James, something was off as he felt James, was scared about something even though he seemed casual to him, you okay? I thought you left town to return home or whatever? Not exactly, per se, there are a few things I need to take care of here, and, I do need your assistance with something, if you don't mind of course, it would be greatly appreciated, the oddly dressed male asked. I would but we're kinda hanging it's fine, Namine stated shocking her temporary team. E.H., Namine, Naruto looked to her, are you sure, it's my day right? She looked forward to James with a kind smile, so I want to help. Well, if you're sure then, Naruto shrugged before turning to James, all right, well help, what can we do? James didn't say anything as he glared at the girls making them flinch at his gaze, until he smiled at the young man of the group, I, all right Boyo and, Boyo's girls, follow me, we're doing some liberation, he said moving forward as the group followed him, do me a favor and try not to get any attention? I. Naruto eyes widen as he ran with the other male almost the second he agreed, matching James quick and light steps with his nearly identical in footprints and details, soon the two were nearly moving across the sea of people almost like ghosts while the others girls watch in amazement at the two teens skills, greatly struggling to barely catch up to the two quick males as they continue to make a greater and even greater distance. Line break so where exactly are we going? Naruto asked James as they kept walking, on a pipeline on top of a building. Smugglers, dust smugglers, the pirate dress male stated before jumping down to grab a ledge expertly and smirks when Naruto did the same. Dust smugglers? Naruto frowned knowing that the last few weeks dust cells were skyrocketing due to thefts but smuggling is an extremely dangerous route to do. Yeah, that's right, apparently, these guys got crates of dust crystals from a Shinee dust company train, and we're gonna stop their operations. Wait, those White Fang members? The teen responded with alarm, the White Fang were a faunus, human-animal hybrid, that been harassing and even violently attack human cities. Originally, it was a peaceful organization that protested inequality and demand for equal rights, but recently their methods have become more violent. Ho oh, oh, glad you been keeping an ear to the ground kid, James stated as he went to an alley and grabs a pipe to climb. I reckon you've been freelancing? Freelancing? Naruto said, why? James looked back pointing to Naruto's metal belt buckle, you don't have to hide it, you're part of the assassin brotherhood right? 
I saw your skills and you move like them. Hell the way you were keeping up with me. A rascal from the streets who had to learn to free run shows me that you're a better runner. I never heard of that in my life, he said as James stopped moving as they were stuck in a rooftop, but the shock look made Naruto confused on why it was such a big deal. Never. That's like not knowing the nomad of nowhere or the four maidens, they're a part of Remnant's history, truly never heard of those assassins? James said moving close to Naruto nearly a few inches from reaching towards him. Maybe it's just a coincidence, Naruto shrugged, James grabs the teen by his shirt and glared at him, it ain't coincidence. You have to know something, he said pushing Naruto roughly away, before his eyes soften at his actions, F forgive me mate, just me ma told me that stories dozen of times before she passed, hits home. It's fine, Naruto waved off, as the former shinobi felt sad for telling this teen the truth. Can you tell me as we walk? The older teen nodded as they moved again, this time jumping from roof to roof. Will do mate, the order, James walked forward as he reached the ledge before restarting. The Order was a secret guild of assassins, no one knows why they form or when, but they fight for humanity, they were told that these assassins have been fighting for centuries as they want to create peace by taking those who start wars, or like that head of the Shni Corporation, the man looked into the sky smiling at the blue sky, some say that they were the reason the cities were now no longer at war. Really, Naruto mused, almost reminding him of his old home save for the justice sense of peace, so what are the stories they have? The most well-known one is the one who saved the assassins, Altair, as Naruto nearly slip on the edge, only for James to grab his mantle to pull him back, whoa, sorry, Altair? Right, James said, the first of the legendary assassins to be known, a hero who was the worst of the master assassins. They jumped down as they skip across a canal via wooden poles to get across, what do you mean worst? Like he had trouble with the training. The pirate-clad teen laughed loudly as he grabbed a ledge to shuffle the cross before jumping down to a broken sewer, turning his head to watch Naruto slowly keeping up he resume his story, no, rather he took everything like a fish with water, sadly, he thought he was above the three laws of the order. The two walked, slowly as they made no sound as they enter the smelly waste pipe, laws? Naruto echoed remembering his old world's own three rules, no drinking, no careless nights with women, that sort of thing? eh where's the fun in that james turned with a confused look they're killers not monks no the rules are something among the lines of never being seen never harm or involve the innocents ah the blonde said as he saw a light in the tunnel so why was he famous he earned his way up and lost his status in a matter of weeks something unheard of in the assassin's order but he learned that there are more things are more important than doing the mission james explained with a soft smile before lifting his hand to stop his friend's movements, were at the location. Naruto's eyes looked forward as he saw outside of the pipe a couple of people wearing black suits that were carrying boxes, looks like we're near the port area. Yeah, it seems that we got lucky they don't come over here, James calculated before noticing something, oi, you hear that? The blonde closed his eyes as voiced above them spoke, Roman, I am a bit disappointed that you didn't get all the dust sooner. A sultry and calm female voice stated as James shook, still better than nothing. Wow, I am so happy to earn your respect, a cocky male voice echoed in the pipe, seriously why the crazy amount of dust? Boyo, you got any weapons besides those hidden blades? James said as he pointed upward, we find the leaders. I got dust infused moves, that's about it, Naruto said as he never got around to making his own weapon, but he was past a black gun. It looked like the standard 9mm guns he had seen in magazines when shopping for food, but with a blade attachment underneath the barrel of the gun, wah. It was an old friend of mine, his sister couldn't take the sight of it, James solemnly stated as he patted Naruto's shoulder, hope you can use it. Roman, continue to steal as much as you can, I have to meet with Adam to get an explanation on why our shni dust didn't arrive as planned, the woman said as James ran out the hole, unable to let this woman walk free. Oh, you're dead whore. He roared as he pulled out a large white sword which was similar to a rapier with curve handle similar to a gun. It had a long three-part handguard to protect nearly halfway towards James' forearm. He lunged at them only to be surrounded by the goons who all took out red-colored blades. Naruto, I need help. On it. He roared quickly making hand signs, water style. He took a deep breath as his jacket left dish on his hand glowed blue from the dust was using. Water dragon bullet. 
he spat out a large volume of water that quickly turned into a Chinese dragon that pushed the thugs into the water. Dear Oem. James smiled at the power of that moved as the blonde stood next to James. Well boy oh, you were good, he said before looking forward to see the two, found Ya Roman. Naruto looked at the two enemies that James made, one was covered in darkness only thing he could see was her legs, since it was fair pair of legs that could only belong to a woman. While the other was an adult man, this Roman had slanted, dark green eyes and bright, long, orange hair, with long bangs covering his right eye, black eyeliner traced his visible left eye. Roman wore a red-lined white suit with long black pants and black shoes, his accessories included a small gray scarf, black gloves with buckled sleeves, and a black bowler hat with a small feather tucked into its red band, well, well the order. It seems you got classy enemies Miss Ash, the man turned to the woman who I and odd symbol glowed from her arms. Oh dear, she said looking at James, odd last time we meet you were such a lovely, man, Miss Ash voice held a tone of amusement as Naruto turned to see James blushed lightly at the statement. Quiet, what's with the dust stealing? The pirate order as Naruto saw the eyes of the woman glowed, shit the rumors were true, Naruto get the hell. Too late, Roman sing out as he pulled out his cane and the end popped open as the part that pop out was a black crosshair, he smiled as a large red light escaped from the end to hit the teens. Scatter. Naruto order kicking James to the side as he rushed forward to attack the two enemies, eyes hardening as something took over him, he leapt upwards as the glowing woman sent out flames at him, but something felt wrong in Naruto's mind, he felt anger when seeing that, no, it was pain from something that was familiar to him, loss. He didn't allow anything to stop him as he pulled out the hidden blades, swiping the flames away as he landed to the glowing woman, who retreated into the shadows, you're not leaving, he roared as he followed her taking out the gun to shoot at her but almost let go of the gun as the recoil almost made him drop it. The bullet however missed, but did its job on stopping the woman's tracks as she turns over, next time, you use something you can handle, just because you want to use a big piece doesn't mean you can she stopped as she shook her head, there you are, she cried out before taking out a pistol. Naruto dodged a bullet that almost got his foot, causing the young man to retreat to his former spot, clicking his tongue as the reincarnated hero heard footsteps coming to his place, moving away to. Got ya. The woman said with a sudden change of tone and accent, lifting a large white weapon that started to discharge lightning while a small ball came from the tip of it. Fire. No sooner than those words left that, the sphere shot out towards Naruto like its elemental namesake, the blonde jump over it, barely escaping it to look and saw it collided with one of the steel crates leaving a large hole. Idiot. The woman was above Naruto sending her into his face, sending him back to the ground with a loud cry, lying there motionless as the pain as he stunned from the clever trick, she landed on her feet before dashing towards Naruto raising her white clad weapon to stab Naruto finally reaching his body. The moment she was about end him, the blonde opened his eyes shocking her allowing to kick the back of her knees as she fell backwards. Naruto gained a grin when standing back up and quickly flip over to do a axe kick missing just barely as the girl flipped over, she pulled her weapon as the weapon was in Naruto's eyes it was no longer some kind of weapon shooting out projectiles but a long straight blade, burst. A stream of white lightning ejected with the blade stabbing Naruto with the added condition of sending him flying. The blonde quickly used his jacket to switch to lightning dust as he feet clung to the nearest cargo bin, and quickly shooting out more bullets at the woman, cage. She shouted as the lighting orb came out again before it suddenly spread out in the shape of a web stopping the bullets until she raised her blade again, return fire, she orders as the lightning slowly rotated the bullets. I wonder why I am here, Naruto quoted a phrase from an old show he watched, as he realizes why was he standing for the enemy to shoot him back, he dives downward before rushing towards the enemy, the person pulled back their sword and thrust it forward as Naruto lifted his weapon to block, as he moved back from the powerful hit, he saw the pistol slowly transforming the blade suddenly spun as it took the chamber as it lengthened out into a katana. Holy, sweet. Naruto said turning his wrist and click on the trigger not knowing why, but watch as gunshot came from the other side of the direction he was swinging causing it to increase the force too. Retract. The woman said as four pieces return into a long white blade as it blocked Naruto's head, I won't let you win woman. Naruto comically gap at the statement, wah. I ain't a chick dude. The woman's shadowy face looked confused before saying a word, dude, Naruto? H how, 
Then it dawns on him, son of a genjutsu, he said moving back as the aura around his body suddenly glowed before it shines brightly, opening his close eyes when to do that action, he saw James looking at him, thought so. Damn she must be brought her teammates with her, James said before stabbing his sword into a crate with a dark look, damn it, I fell for it like a newbie. XXXXX how did he undo my semblance? A dark skin girl said in slight amazement from the skill the blonde did. Great so we gotta watch that in the future, a male teen said walking behind the girl and consentingly pats her back, might need to get better M. However the one who spoke to the man earlier stood far away from them, touching her chest, what the hell happened there? She was trying to lower her heartbeat when that blonde teen was chasing her, it made her confused on what just happened, and why want her damn heart stop beating fast? XXXXX Naruto. The blonde turned to see his three teammates finally reaching them. Guys. What took you so long? He asked before the twins suddenly need his stomach in perfect unison as he doubled over. We had to parkour our way here. Melanie shouted as she pointed to her dress, which had rips and tears. You're going to sew them better, capiche? Yeah, yeah, Naruto said quickly, knowing a wrath of a woman's scorn. He turned to James with a sad look, sorry that we couldn't win. The man shook his head, no, don't worry, mate, this just means I need to get me own teammates here, the pirate themed teen said before looking at Naruto with a smile. Thanks, boyo, if you didn't say that thing, me own brother said, I would have killed ya. Can't this guy speak proper English? The white dressed twin said as she felt her ears bleed from this teen crude speaking. Well, what's best for you, I say, Naruto said back before presenting the gunblade to James, who gently placed a hand on it and pushed it forward. Keep it, never seen anyone actually pull out its sword form, me brother would have been proud, he said, punching Naruto's shoulder playfully, before suddenly hugging him, you be safe, ya here boyo. Namine and her two female allies just stared in slight shock and lust, for Namine to see James do that with Naruto, but the blonde felt a little sad as he pats the older boy's back, you too man, he said before James let go with slight reluctance. Alright, yo girlies, James smiled with a wink, make sure you punch his v-card, he said as the two twins blushed and went to throw rocks at him as he laughed out loud. Naruto looked at the female blonde girl, sorry for this, do you want to do something else before the day is done? He pointed at the sky as it was slowly going to be night soon. Well, XXXXX mirror, I hate singing, Melanie said with a sigh as she drank some sweet tea. To end the weird day Naruto told them they were going to the nearest karaoke and so far only Namine song four songs already, and quite well to be honest, oi, another virgin Long Island tea, double the tea, she ordered through the intercom. Sheesh, I thought all girls like singing, Naruto said as he drank a blue soda, it tasted like cherries oddly enough, how about you Miltia? The blonde looked at the red twin who spent most of the time looking at song on the tablet. I, don't know which song to sing, Miltia pouted, as she scrolled down. Al, LLLLLL. Namine bowed her head with a large smile as her teammate clapped at her performance again. I love that song. She giggled happily losing her shy attitude as they looked at each other. So who's next? My throat is parched. She joked as she downed a juice she ordered. You're up Miltia, Naruto grinned. W8, I haven't picked a song yet. Miltia panicked as she scrolled through the list faster. Take your time, I got this room for another hour anyway. Hey, pass the pocky. Naruto grabbed the only strawberry treat from his world from the white dress twin, Sheesh. Uh, you sound like my mom, she growled. Melanie, don't get caught stealing, she mocked what her mother said with a frown. Sorry, Naruto replied before eating the sweet treat. Hey, you think James would come back? The twins and Naruto looked to see Namine looking oddly serious, I mean not for us I mean for that criminal. She added on, I don't know, to be honest, why do you ask? Naruto questioned, I feel like, she might be back, who knows, the twins said before smiling at each other, let's sing sis, they said once more in perfect thanks for watching friends.